Daily Words of God Genesis chapter 9, verses 11 through 13 And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. At the end of Noah's story, we saw God use an unusual method to express his feelings at the time. This method is very special, and that's to make a covenant with man. It is a method that declares the end to God's use of floods to destroy the world. From the outside, making a covenant seems like a very ordinary thing. It is nothing more than using words to bind both parties from infringing acts so as to help achieve the purpose of protecting the interests of both sides. In form, it is a very ordinary thing, but from the motivations behind and meaning of God doing this thing, it is a true revelation of God's disposition and state of mind. If you just put these words aside and ignore them, if I never tell you the truth of things, then humanity will really never know God's thinking. Perhaps in your imagination, God is smiling when he makes this covenant. Or perhaps his expression is serious. But regardless of what the most common type of expression God has, in people's imaginations, no one can see God's heart or his pain, let alone his loneliness. No one can make God trust them or be worthy of God's trust or be someone he can express his thoughts or confide his pain to. That is why God had no choice but to do such a thing. On the surface, God did an easy thing to farewell the previous humanity, settling the past and drawing a perfect conclusion to his destruction of the world by flood. However, God had buried the pain from this moment deep inside his heart. At a time when God did not have anyone to confide in, he made a covenant with mankind telling them that he would not destroy the world by flood again. When the rainbow appears, it is to remind people that such a thing had once happened, to warn them not to do evil things. Even in such a painful state, God did not forget about mankind and still showed so much concern for them. Is this not God's love and unselfishness? But what do people think of when they are suffering? Isn't this the time they need God the most? At times like this, people always drag God over so God can comfort them. No matter when, God will never let people down, and He will always let people walk out of their predicaments and live in the light. Although God so supplies mankind, in man's heart, God is none other than just a reassurance pill, a comfort tonic. When God is suffering, when his heart is wounded, having a created being or any person keep him company or comfort him is undoubtedly just an extravagant wish for God. Man never pays attention to God's feelings, so God never asks nor expects there to be someone who can comfort him. He merely uses his own methods to express his mood. 
People don't think it is a big deal for God to go through some suffering. But only when you truly try to understand God, when you can genuinely appreciate God's earnest intentions in everything He does, can you feel God's greatness and His selflessness. Even though God made a covenant with mankind using the rainbow, He never told anyone why He did this, why He established this covenant, meaning He never told anybody His real thoughts. This is because there is no one who can comprehend the depth of the love God has for the mankind He created with His own hands. And there is also no one who can appreciate just how much pain His heart suffered when He destroyed humanity. Therefore, even if He tells people how He feels, they cannot undertake this trust. Despite being in pain, He still goes on with the next step of His work. God always gives His best side and the best things to mankind, while quietly bearing all the suffering Himself. God never openly discloses these sufferings. Instead, He endures them and waits in silence. God's endurance is not cold, numb, or helpless, nor is it a sign of weakness. But it is that God's love and essence has always been selfless. This is a natural revelation of His essence and disposition, and a genuine embodiment of God's identity as the true Creator.